come from and about where she is today. Um, so it's going to be herself up here, um, no PowerPoints, and very much feel free as well to ask questions. Um, there will be time for that. Um, so yes, yeah, so can everyone please welcome Laura. Thanks. Can everyone hear me okay with a microphone? Yeah, yeah hear me at the back. Great, brilliant, lovely. Um, I'd like to thank um, Emily and Francis uh, for inviting me to be part of this day. Really honoured um, to share my personal experience with, um, with MS. Um, does anyone else in the audience have MS or know someone that has MS? Yeah, there's a few, few hands going up there. Yeah. Um, my um, mother was diagnosed with MS, with primary progressive MS, when I was 10 years old. So, and in, within four years um, of, of her being diagnosed, she went from a squash playing yoga fanatic to being in a wheelchair, being fed and bathed. So, when my diagnosis came along, you can understand my paralyzing panic and fear that I felt with that diagnosis. Um, Everybody, I think, um, handles their own MS diagnosis very differently. Um, also, my husband, who's here in the audience, yeah, he has MS as well, so what are the chances, eh? <laughs> um, so, with, with after that fear, I think then came um, a lot of anger that, you know, all my childhood had been about MS and caring for my mother, and now I had MS, and, you know, why me? And a lot of hopelessness was, was felt with that. And then came denial, where I would go out and stay up late, or you know, maybe drink alcohol, or you know, not live within certain parameters that I have to live today. So within that denial period probably came my most learning, and that's when I met John as well. So it's very interesting that, that, that John's um, element of a healthy lifestyle was very similar to myself. That prompted my own research into diet and nutrition, um, which I then came across what um, Richard was talking about was the paleo diet and how eating better would help my MS symptoms if it, if it could, if it could help in any way. Um, that then um, evolved onto finding out about low carb, high fat diet. And I think that was great that I bumped into Emily round about that, that time as well. Um, the research took me to um, a doctor called Dr. Terry Walls. I don't know if any one of you have heard um, about Dr. Terry Walls. Dr. Terry Walls had, um, has basically cured her primary and secondary progressive MS through diet and through lifestyle. Um, also, I brought some books with me as well. If anyone was interested to find out where I got my research from, please you know, give me a shout over lunchtime. I've got books with me that may, that may help. Um, that also brought me um, um, to a Dr. Sarah Ballantyne as well, which I felt took the Dr. Terry Walls research and a lot of her, her, own, um, her own experimentation a step, a step further. So th those, those, two, those two women has helped me, helped me immensely. Um, eliminating carbs. Um, I always thought that I had a healthy lifestyle, being from a, a fitness uh, background, I thought I was eating healthy, you know, eating pasta, and eating whole grain bread and all that kind of thing. I thought I had a healthy lifestyle. But it wasn't until um, I read a book called The Grain Brain, which um, really took me by surprise where it wasn't until I eliminated the bread, the pasta, the rice, the potatoes, the granola, um, uh, pretzels, which I all thought was helpful and healthy, that I really found a huge difference in my, in my symptoms. I think also, you know, John's MS is slightly different from my MS. It's such a, a unique illness. Um, my main problems with um, MS are, are fatigue which will be interesting to hear the next speaker who's you know, talking about stress and fatigue and things like that. Um, when I stopped, when I eliminated carbohydrate from, from my diet, um, my brain fog and my fatigue literally lifted, not overnight, maybe a few weeks, maybe about a month, and um, completely lifted. <coughs> and that really prompted even more research, even my own research, and, my own self-experimentation, even, even more so. Um, 
what eliminating those those kind of carbohydrates really forced me to look at what food was and it forced me to actually eat real food and concentrated on on what kind of nutrients that I had had in my diet and um, I felt also um, when I eliminated them that I was actually falsely filling myself up with fake food, I'm going, to, I'm going to call it, which basically was creating more inflammation in my body. I know Richard mentioned um, um, briefly in his um, talk as well about inflammation, which I'm finding is key with, uh, with my um, MS, MS journey. Um, another thing that has, has helped me, and I ca can't live without it now, is food journaling. Um, it takes quite a while to then start to log the, the, the timings that you're eating, um, um, but, but tracking your food, mood and sleep um, has really um, made me even healthier and has made me control my MS symptoms even, even more so. Um, I was eating a lot of um, nuts um, and coconut milk. Um, but actually I found through my food journal that the nuts and the coconut milk were actually causing major problems for me. So when I, when I actually sort of track back going, you know, why is my fatigue not lifting? Why is my balance really off today? Why is my speech a little bit slurry today? Again, when I completely eliminated nuts and the coconut milk, not coconut oil, I have a lot of coconut oil in my diet, um, again, lifted my fatigue even even further. So unless, if I hadn't been keeping a food journal, I wouldn't have been able to really critique and tweak my diet even more so. But everything's going to be a you know a food journal. Everything's going to be slightly um, um, unique for for every single dif different person. And um, what I have also realised with with myself and my own diet is that every little counts. I know that if I had for lunch today, and I'm sure it's not on the menu today, Emily, if I sat down and had, you know, a spaghetti carbonara, um, I would probably then go stagger to bed and probably sleep for 13 or 14 hours. So I, it's taken a while, and maybe that's in a little bit of a denial stage where it's going, no, I'm going to eat the, these, you know, pasta, I'm going to eat that rice, you know, that's what I want to eat, I'm going to eat that. But the only person that really is, has problems with that is only myself, no one else. So I've really had to learn to live within new parameters and new boundaries. But it's not just about about food for me. It's also about uh, it's about lifestyle and living within different parameters. Um, I have to be in bed for 7:30 every night. Um, otherwise, I can't function normally. Um, I work full time. Um, I do a lot of driving with my work, which has has its own challenges. I got home yesterday at four o'clock and basically crawled to bed so that I would be able to get enough sleep so I could come and you know be he be here today. Um, so I'm definitely sleeping more, um, exercising moderately. Um, as I said, I'm from a sort of a fitness uh, background where I would go to the gym, I would you know, try and do classes. Um, there's certain classes, high intensity classes that I can't do now, but I'm exercising moderately. And it's keeping consistent exercise into your diet and lifestyle as well, which is helping with my core, which is then helping with my balance, which is helping keeping my muscles strong, that I'll be able to function like a, a normal person, shall we say. Um, also, managing stress, and that's going to be, I'm going to be really interested in the next speaker. Um, stress, especially work-related stress, can knock me for six and really flare up my MS symptoms. So learning to incorporate meditation in a, a, in a, a, a daily basis um, is really helping. And I think getting, keeping a, just keeping a, a, a good perspective on life as well. Also with my, myself, and again, my MS is slightly different from my husband's MS, I get a lot of um, neck tension, a lot of muscle tension. Um, so regular massage really helps to keep me, me supple and to keep me relaxed as well, which again helps with my MS symptoms. Um, that's really about, about, about it for me. 
Is there any, has anybody got any questions? I've never, as you can probably tell, I've never done public speaking before, so I don't want to, don't want to bore you all. But if there was any questions that anybody had, please feel free. Yeah. Does it tend to coconut milk or coconut milk directly from the coconut that you said you are talking about? Um, well, is it funny? Um, social, I've found social media and Twitter um, are a great source of information, and I've connected with um, quite a few other MS sufferers who have got a similar mindset to myself. You know, with the carbohydrate, paleo, uh, ketogenic diet, and it was it was Dr. Terry Walls said in one of her books that coconut milk really helped her and helped keeping her fat high. But it was another person that said, well, wait a minute, I can't tolerate coconut meat or coconut milk. Maybe try tweaking that or taking that out your, out your, your diet. So when I, look, I looked back at my food journals to see, you know, what had I changed, what I had in coconut milk was in my diet a lot. So again, I thought, right, for the next two weeks, I will eliminate that completely, then let me see what happens. And it, was, it wasn't until I actually eliminated that that I actually, again, felt my fatigue lifting a little bit more, or my recovery from working full time, or exercising or going to the gym, that I was able to recover a lot, a lot better. Um, and the same with the nuts as well. I always thought nuts, you know, high fat, good fat, you're actually gonna, gonna help me. But again, through more research of my own, that the, the, the nuts are quite high in omega-6. So I want to keep my omega-3 levels quite high, but my, my omega-6 levels quite low, not eliminate them completely, but again, to keep that anti-inflammatory process in my, in my body as well. Yes. Well, yeah, and, and, and previously I would uh, uh, love doing um, high impact aerobics, body attack, insanity, and, and those kind of, the, and then after that, then I would go to the gym and, I would, and, then I would go, and then I would lift some weights and then I would, I would work on my cardio. That was my level that I had built myself up over the years of being a fitness instructor in the, in the early 90s. What I was finding, and again, it was the psychological thing that I was finding that I couldn't do that level of exercise. Therefore, then that caused me to get depressed because I couldn't do that level of exercise. But again, what I've learned to do is almost unlearn things. So where, where that was my standard before, I had to go, right, forget that. What can you do now? And I, I, hopefully I'm coming from a very positive mindset. Instead of focusing on the things, and there's a lot of things that I can't do that where I used to be able to do it, maybe, let's say, five years ago. I was diagnosed with MS five years ago. So, for example, at the weekend, I'll have to limit what I can do. So moderate exercise will be very different for, 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 for everybody because someone's warm up here will be someone else's workout. So again, the moderate exercise is finding out what's moderate for, for you as an individual. For me, a moderate exercise is splitting up my weights from my cardio. So I will maybe go in and do maybe 30 to 45 minutes of steady state cardio. I find that the insanity workouts or the high intensity pounding you know, workouts, I can't do because afterwards it will take me so long to recover that it's then affecting other aspects of my life. But again, everybody, everybody will be different. Someone to, to maybe thinking of being on a, a stepper or a, um, um, a um, the cardio machine for 45 minutes, that might be very intense for someone else and not moderate. I was thinking of the mind-body programs. Sorry? I was thinking more along the lines of mind-body programs. <coughs> Yes, and that's, and that's where I'm learning that also I have to incorporate, start to incorporate yoga into my, into my, my, my lifestyle, incorporate um, uh, body balance, incorporate stretching, incorporate the, yeah, the mind rather than just focusing on strengthening and my, my body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you walk us through what a day looks like for you? Sorry, could you speak? Could you walk us through a typical day for you? 
Yeah, abs absolutely. Diet wise, you mean? Uh, uh, Every diet and lifestyle. Okay, yeah. lifestyle, brilliant. I will be in, well, my, my husband um, uh, is, a, is a taxi driver, so he's up very early in the morning at 3 a.m. So he goes to bed very early. So I will tend to go to bed at 7.30 in the evening. I have to keep a routine um, and again, sort of working with your sort of circadian rhythms. Um, um, I will, um, 7.30, I will put on relaxing music. I will dim the lights. I will then read a book for maybe about half an hour. Then do my meditation to relax, bring my stress levels down to go to sleep. When I get up in the morning, I'll then drink half a liter of um, room temperature water with a fresh lemon. I'll drink that. A typical breakfast for me, I think I tweeted a breakfast this morning, Francis, um, I had um, cooked some turkey scallops in coconut oil. I would have that for my breakfast with some steamed spinach and half an avocado. That'll be my breakfast. Um, what I found when I started to increase my fat levels that my hunger um, practically dis disappeared. I was always of the mindset that I would be eating every three hours to keep my blood sugar levels normal, uh, to keep my glucose levels, you know, um, uh, um, good. But what I'm finding now, instead of eating maybe five, six times a day, I'm now eating maybe four, sometimes three times a day. So it's helped that blood sugar level uh, very well. However, on a Sunday afternoon, I do all my food prep, I prep all my vegetables, I prep my protein for the week ahead. I never leave home without my cool bag, which is it's a bit like a security blanket, like my husband says. So I always have my prepared meals for with me because I don't want to be cut short at um, a function or a, a, a friend or family's house when they bring out the bread, they bring out the, the, the pastries, the cake. I don't want, I realise now that if I went, oh, well, I don't want to be rude, I'll just have a little bit of that pizza, or I'll just have a little bit of that, well, I'm sorry, I've learned to be selfish because it's only me that actually becomes ill and becomes sick if I, if I make someone else feel, feel better. So I always have my meals with me. Uh, water intake is, I've found a huge thing to help with my fatigue, a minimum of two to three liters of water a day. So there is a lot of planning, there is a lot of preparation, but I think I've got it down to, down to a pat now where I don't even have to think, you know, think about it. You know, I was talking to Alessandra earlier who you know, has a lot of food allergies and is celiac, and, and the, the fundamental traveling or even just going out for the day takes a lot of planning because you have to take everything with you. You have to take your water, you have to take your food. Um, exercise for me, I'll, I'll try to do my exercise about 6 a.m. So after having <coughs> breakfast, I'll then go to the gym, um, but then eating within an hour after the gym. So my recovery is there as well. Um, I'm a, a, a rep. Um, I do a lot of travelling for work, so I'm able to sort of eat when, when I want to really. Um, last meal of the day will probably be, be 6 o'clock at night, and then I start my wind down for, 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 for bed. Okay. Any oh, other questions? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, and again, this supplementation. Again, I want to say that this is um, my personal um, experimentation and journey. Um, um, I take um, a high dose of uh, vitamin D. Um, again, a lot of reading about about vitamin D supplementation and can you can you overdose in vitamin D? Uh, can vitamin D be toxic? Um, I take, especially during the winter winter months, I double my um, uh, vitamin D supplementation. So I, I take 10,000 IU vitamin D in the morning, and I take the same again at night time as well. I also take quite a high dose of um, um, omega-3 fish oil, um, again, in the morning and night time. In the morning also, I take um, a fairly high dose of coenzyme Q10 as well. Um, at night time, I'm, I'm finding to help again with my stress and uh, to help me sleep, I'm taking um, 600 milligrams of um, magnesium citrate. Um, which I'm also finding I used to have a little bit of sort of muscle shaking, muscle spasming uh, with MS. I'm found that when I've started, since started taking the magnesium citrate, and um, it's also a muscle relaxant as well, those muscle spasms have, have stopped. One of, one of my main, main symptoms when I was first diagnosed MS was the pins and needles and a tingling deadness um, along my left calf 
and my left foot and slight foot drop. Since eliminating <coughs> eggs, egg yolks, egg whites from my diet, that symptom has gone. Absolutely 100% disappeared. A few years ago, I did have um, um, meringue and cream again at a, fam at a family do, um, and it was practically 12 hours later that that deadness tingling in my foot came, came back again, whether it was a mixture of the egg, of the sugar, of the dairy um, um, as well, but I got quite a fright at how quickly that that, that symptom came back. Um, but again, you know, there's some food sensitivities. I'll have food triggers and food sensitivities that perhaps, you know, other MS sufferers may not have. But what I found as well that since I sort of started doing the, the paleo diet and then the autoimmune protocol, which is what I follow now with Dr. Sarah Valentine, um, I'm finding that um, triggers can be different. And if I add back in those triggers, it, my body reacts quite quickly, and probably my body's more sensitive now than it was maybe three, four, five years ago. Okay, another question? Yeah, obviously you sound as if you're somebody who's done copious amounts of... Sorry, Pete, I'm back. Sorry, you sound like you've done copious amounts of independent research. Yeah. Therefore, I'd be interested in your thoughts on what the actual triggers are for MS. I mean, obviously, there's a genetic component. You mentioned that your, your mother had it. Yes. And uh, well, it's more the environmental triggers that, that I'm interested in. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, it's interesting, you know, um, uh, John's uh, sister recently has had um, uh, her diagnosis of MS as well. When, um, before I was diagnosed with MS, when I tried to get life insurance and life cover, because my mother had MS, I couldn't get any cover at all for MS. They, they said it wasn't hereditary, they were saying that it's a genetic. Now it's funny, you know, looking back when, when my mother was diagnosed with MS, she was 38 and I was around about the same age as well. Um, I believe that I know what my trigger was for my MS, and again you're right, it was a stress environment trigger for me. Again, a bit like the moderate exercise, what's one trigger for someone, um, or, or a stressful experience may be stressful for me, may not be stressful for you. So I think it can be, what my, my trigger was, I believe, a very horrible, nasty divorce, I think, really triggered a low point, maybe, in myself, that, 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 that triggered that MS. Um, but now I feel that I'm more sensitive to, the, to my environment, and I'm more aware of what could potentially trigger a bad MS reaction. <laughs> But what I've also um, learned to do, and again, um, um, when Emily was talking about a ketogenic and sort of maybe you can sort of test for ketones, what I found is when I was testing for ketones, I felt that I was more focusing on a number rather than listening to my, my body. And again, it's very much not just watching what I'm eating, it's a whole lifestyle thing of keeping my stress levels low, making sure that I'm getting enough sleep, and staying away from toxic people because I find they can be a, <laughs> they can be a they can be a big stressor as well, you know. I think we're going to have to leave it there for questions just now, but if the floor is around. We'll yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be sort of kicking about till about lunchtime. I've got um, uh, my contact details with me. If anyone wants my contact details, please you know feel free to ask uh, ask them for me. Contact me if anyone else has, has got any other questions at all. If I can help or motivate anyone in a small way, I'd be, I'd be delighted. Thank you. Thank you.